This week on the vlog, five disparate, completely unrelated recommendations to make your life better. Ooh la la, that sounds interesting. I am not being paid for these endorsements. So that's it today. It's uh, five things I like that you might like too. It might be a slightly slim idea for a vlog, but this is where we are. I'll put links for all of them down below there, in the uh, just above the comments. Uh, but don't look at them now. Don't uh, don't spoil the surprise. Let's go to our first recommendation. So this first one is a website, treasuretrails.co.uk. Yeah, it's treasure hunts but who doesn't like a treasure hunt I know it's supposed to be for kids but I love them uh, me and Leo have done several of them and they're such a great idea what they've done is they've, they've written three kinds of uh, mysteries murder mysteries spy mysteries and treasure hunts and they've written puzzles for towns and cities all over the country so what you do is you go on their website you download the mystery for where you are and then you follow the clues and the clues are answered by looking for things on buildings looking for information about statues or monuments uh, signs and they're really good fun i've done several of them with leo they're a great way to find out about the place where you are whether it's in your own hometown or city or somewhere where you're visiting it is sort of for kids, but actually I think adults would really like it. In fact, I like doing them so much, I've started doing my own. I've, uh, I've done one for a local park near where we live, and that proved very popular with Leo and uh, some of his friends at school. In fact, raised quite a bit of money for the school off the back of it. And now I'm doing another one in another local park. They're great. It is for kids, but it's only a tenner, and it's a brilliant day out. admit uh, it was my wife who bought the scooter and I was very unsure about it I think I told her I said to her that there was absolutely no way I would ever use the scooter but as things went along I kind of got used to it and I started liking it it's really good for getting to distances that are just slightly too far to walk or if you're a bit short of time you can just jump on it and uh, get there quickly but don't just take my word for it let's ask someone else Hello. come here on this side. What do you think of the scooter? Uh, pretty good. Yeah? But you don't work for, it's made by Oxalo, you don't work for them do you? Oh yeah, I do. The best thing about the scooter is there's a little uh, kind of step that Leo can stand on and it means that we can just go around together short distances, long distances and I don't get any complaining about how much he has to walk. It's brilliant. Scootering is great for the environment. This scooter doesn't need petrol or electricity. It runs purely on foot power, as you can see here. And that means it's also great for exercising, especially for the buttocks. Ever since I've been scootering, I've developed really firm and powerful haunches. Everyone loves a good summer read and my next recommendation is by Bill Bryson and it's called The Body, A Guide for Occupants. Uh, I've just finished reading this and it's absolutely brilliant. You'll just spend most of the time reading bits out to everyone around you and really annoying them because it's just so fascinating. The book can get very technical at times but Bill Bryson is so good at making it accessible and just throwing in facts or anecdotes or stories that suddenly make you stick, sit up and really take notice. The, the description at one point that um, he quotes of someone describing the pain of an old-fashioned mastectomy is one of the most horrific things I've ever read for example as is the description of um, a lithotomy. Here's what it looked like. Uh, yeah pretty horrific that's um, someone having bladder stones removed but then there are also just incredible tales um, this is this one's about um, 
a guy called Alexis St. Martin who accidentally got shot just below the left chest in 1822 in America. He was a Canadian trapper. Um, and his doctor realized that the, um, the hole didn't properly ever heal. So he could actually sort of see into his stomach through this hole. So he took him home and sort of did experiments of him in exchange for taking care of him. Um, so back then in 1822, no one knew quite what happened to food once it disappeared down one's throat. St. Martin had the only stomach on earth that could be studied directly. Beaumont's experiments principally consisted of suspending different foods on lengths of silken thread into St. Martin's stomach, leaving them for a measured interval, then pulling them out to see what had happened. Sometimes, in the interests of science, he tasted the contents, the, the contents of the thing that he just dipped in someone's stomach, to judge their tartness and acidity, and by so doing, deduce that the principal digestive agent of the stomach is hydrochloric acid. This was a breakthrough that caused great excitement in gastric circles and made Beaumont famous. It's full of great stuff like that. I, honestly, it, it, for, for a sort of essentially a biology book, it's one of the best books I've ever read. Huge recommendation. I am not being paid for this endorsement. This jumper. Regular readers have probably guessed that I sourced this jumper from Uniqlo, which is where I buy almost all my clothes. Um, and the reason I love it is because it's kind of magic. It's perfect for every season in the year. In the summer, it's warm, but not too warm on those chilly summer evenings. It's perfect for a kind of light spring jumper or a light autumn jumper. And then in the winter, when it's really cold, it's the perfect undergarment to wear perhaps under a large, chunky knit to keep you really nice and cozy and warm. So this is my clothing recommendation. The problem with this clothing recommendation is that when I bought it from Uniqlo, I took it home and thought, if I like this, and it is nice, a kind of a thin, fleecy jumper, what I'll do is I'll go back and buy it in several other colours as well, and I can rotate them throughout the week. Unfortunately, when I went back, they'd stopped selling them. And the man in the shop said that they'd start selling them again in the autumn, but they didn't. They didn't have it in the autumn at all, or the following spring, or the autumn after that. And now every time I go to Uniqlo, I look, hoping to find this thin fleece jumper in a nice powder blue, perhaps, or even a black. Oh, I'm not that fussy. I just want another one. This one's getting old. And they're brilliant. And my final recommendation, you can probably hear it sizzling away there. It's my superb frying pan stroke casserole cooker dish made by Le Cruise. Is that how you say it? Le Cruise? Le Cruise? Le Cruise? Le Cruise? Le Cruise? Anyway. These pans are brilliant, and actually, uh, they are what inspired this vlog. Um, I read The Guardian, get over it, and uh, every year they do a thing around Christmas where they talk about the companies with the best uh, reputation for both the product and their customer service. And it's kind of a long-running joke in that article they do every year. Le, Le Cloisse always comes out on top because these things essentially last forever. In about 500 years time, uh, whatever people still exist in this world are going to be digging these up and going, well, we can still use these, these are amazing, and, and cooking with them. There's a story that I heard uh, from someone in this article one year. They said they bought a Le Coise pan in a charity shop, and they used it for a couple of years, thought it was great, and then it, it did, one of the rare ones that actually started to crack or didn't work or, wasn't, or, or, or lost its non-stickiness. And they uh, wrote to Le Coise, and even though it was second hand and bought in a charity shop, the lifetime guarantee still applied and they replaced it with no quibble. What a company they are. Absolutely incredible. The only drawback is, as you can imagine, these things are fiendishly expensive. So you might have to do what I did and uh, get a loved one to get it for you for a joint birthday and Christmas present. Well, that's it. That's my... Uh, 
five recommendations. Um, oh, I, I like uh, Marmite as well. Uh, is that how you pronounce it? Marmite? 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 Bye!